Mars can seem pretty Earth-like, including a day that lasts just over 24 hours. A day on Venus lasts longer than its year. But if you're a fan of Twilight, Mars is the place to go to enjoy a couple of hours of it to start and end your day on this episode of Mars Guy. After some bizarre driving on New Year's Day, which I presented in the previous episode, Perseverance arrived at its current location in the margin carbonate unit on the 3rd of January. As shown by its tracks, with Mars Guy for scale, Perseverance appears to have even been a bit confused at the end of this drive, approaching the slabs of bedrock before backing away a few meters. But its orientation nicely positioned it to capture a view of the gap in the rim of Jezero Crater and the interesting knobby terrain just outside of it. This geography becomes apparent in the orbital view, which shows the gap in the rim cut by the meandering river from the west. That river is responsible for dumping the sediments that formed the Jezero Delta fan deposit inside the crater and carving Neretva Vallis, which Perseverance is now parked next to. A few sols after arriving, Perseverance got to work on this rock slab. That little backup move meant that Perseverance would have to reach out farther than typical, taking advantage of its two meter long arm. As was the case with the last investigation, it started by deploying the gas dust removal tool, G-Dirt, to blow away the surface dust layer. And once again, this exposed the same purplish rock coating as seen at the previous location and throughout the stretch of Jezero Crater explored by Perseverance. See episode 143. Having completed this work, Perseverance raised its arm to the sky and held it there throughout the night. An unorthodox move. Also unorthodox is waking up well before sunrise to take pictures. Perseverance shot this wide-angle view with its body-mounted front hascam at 4.26 a.m., nearly an hour before sunrise at 5.20. The amount of light is pretty amazing. This would be considered civil twilight on Earth when you can see without the need for artificial lights. Right now in Arizona, that starts only 27 minutes before sunrise. In Jezero, it's at least twice that thanks to dust high in the atmosphere. At 5.24, four minutes after sunrise, the scene is notably brighter, but still no obvious shadows. Maybe the eastern rim of the crater is blocking direct sunlight. An hour later, that's all changed. Shadows from the rover and nearby rocks are clearly visible, with some of the rocks appearing overexposed by the direct sunlight. As the hours pass, the rover becomes a giant sundial, with the shadow of its raised robotic arm providing a recognizable reference feature passing through the scene. Its disappearance comes in mid-afternoon, replaced by lengthening shadows of rocks and the gradual dimming of the light. At 5.21 p.m., the sun is finally set, 12 hours and one minute after sunrise, on a sol just a few away from fall equinox in the northern hemisphere of Mars. Once again, there are no local shadows, but this time it's evident that the sun has set behind the landscape. An hour later, the western sky is still aglow, backlighting that landscape with dusty twilight. And so goes a saw in the life of perseverance. Maybe someday kids on Mars will enjoy the hour of playtime between sunset and the streetlights coming on.